this time I'm going to be taking a look at the Horsa Glider from Sarissa. Um, now I've heard you know, a variety of things about this kit. Um, lots of people giving it high praise. Um, saying how, how good it is, you know, as a finished model. But also I've heard a lot of things about it being quite a tricky build. So... I'm going to take my time with this one a little bit because I think with the card elements it seems, you know, from what I've heard that's the bit that gives people the most problems so I want to try and take myself, you know, take it carefully going through this one but uh, we'll just open it up right, so I've opened her up Right, first of all, we've got the building guide, which looks really detailed to follow. Uh, here's some of the uh, card pieces that I've read about. It looks like it's pre-scored to to bend next part the fuselage I'm presuming this is part of the wing structure Looks like the main part of the body. Oh. Not something you see in every Sarissa kit, some metal parts. Probably some form of weight. Certainly a few parts to it, <laughs> a few, quite a few boards look. Yes, I think I'm going to take my time with this one. I've never built an aeroplane before, uh, apart from well, airfix kits years ago, but I've never built a Sarissa, uh, an MDF one. So it'll be very interesting. Right, I'll clear, clear things up a bit and uh, see what parts I need first. So I've popped all the parts out of uh, the first sheet and it's telling me that these ones, which is part number one, can be actually glued to part number two before you affix it to the base. So that's what I'm going to do first. sure that I get these perfectly lined up because I think that's going to be critical when it comes to fitting it to the base.
one. This is going to be a bit involved, so I may just speed some of this up. fiddling around showing you you know thinking out what places they need to go at I thought I'd just show you what it should look like at this stage it, you just you just need to kind of think it through as you're putting it in to be honest because it would be very easy to go wrong on this um, so just I think the secret's going to be just taking your time, to be honest. Right, I'll crack on to the next bit. And, uh, you know, when I start getting this other piece in, that'll give it some stability. Right, I finally got this piece together. Now, I'm not going to say that this bit wasn't awkward, because it was. Um, at first, you know, opening and shutting it was very stiff and it just felt like something was going to break. Um, but I've just uh, fettled with it a little bit and, uh, you know, shaved a little bit off of one of the uh, pivot points and then squeezed it up a bit more and now I've got it opening and shutting okay. But, uh, yeah, it it wasn't easy. I've decided to uh, jump a bit of a stage, if you like, but I don't think that there's any other way to get to this uh, inside piece once, once I've fitted it together. And I've got some pictures of the uh, glider itself and the inside cab and the actual fuselage where the men sat is this colour green so I don't know whether I'm being a bit rash trying to paint it as I go along whether I'll end up regretting this I don't know but I thought I'd give it a go and uh, Hopefully it won't hinder the actual construction part. Just thought it'd be it'd be nice, you know, if I could look through the front and see it coloured rather than just plain MDF. It's mainly the cab part that I'm interested in I should you know I won't paint underneath here because you're not going to see under here so and I'm not going to well I'm going to try not to get the paint where I need to glue it as well right, that's that bit I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to paint the inside of this piece as well. Right, well I'm sure you don't want to just wait while I'm painting this, so I'll bring you back when I've got it finished. Right, you're going to have to wish me luck with this bit. <laughs> I've jumped the gun a bit, and I've painted the inside the troop carrying section I've kept it really light um, a light covering it doesn't have to be perfect I mean at the end of the day it is a military vehicle but I didn't want to risk putting on too much paint and making it very hard you know to shut doors or open anything and as I'm jumping the gun and I don't know what stages come next I'm trying to be a little bit careful about where I do put the paint. 
I've then decided to go whole hog because I'm doing it and I've started painting the inside of the skin of the nose cone and the front window screen I've also painted the black parts and the reason for that is I thought I'm hoping this won't backfire on me and become a problem I'm going to use some uh, plastic from a soldier packet uh, clear plastic for the window screens um, obviously there's no call for that in the kit it's just something I'm going to try and do but as I say keep your fingers crossed for me because I'm not sure whether I'm going to obscure any positions I need to put things in or but I'm just going to give it a go so I'll bring you back when I've got that in place because it's going to be a bit fiddly. Won't be a second. I just thought I'd share this bit with you um, before I put it together finally. I've put the uh, plastic window screens in that I'm hoping they're not going to get in the way of fixing it. And same with the side windows. Uh, more importantly at the minute is to remember to put your washers in the bottom half of your cab out of sight you know for the waiting and what I've done with mine um, is I've super glued them together and then super glued them in place because obviously I don't want them wobbling around and perhaps poking out the side um, so and it feels fairly hefty now but that's the place you want to be putting them because you're not going to see that right let's put this together wish me luck it actually went together fairly well i'm just holding it together now with an elastic band while it dries i just thought i'd bring you back in for this bit because i think i might have stumbled across a technique um just through me being finicky about painting the inside um, because before I started painting this, you know, I was gently teasing it into shape, but it was really stiff and it, it just wasn't giving. Anyway, I must have got distracted because then I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll paint that before I start doing that. And I gave it a very light coat, you know, to make it match the rest of it. But it was just enough to soften the card so while it was softened it was a lot easier to get this into a rounded shape so you know I mean I didn't didn't uh, plan for that it was just because I painted it and then went back to trying the folding and all of a sudden the folding was a lot easier so whether it's a technique that other people could try, I don't know, but it seems to have worked for me. I mean, obviously I've got to get it in place yet, but the curve on it seems pretty good, pretty natural. And it, it was definitely, you know, because I'd painted that inside, it was a lot easier. You know, while it was still, you know, because I did put it on so thin, but it had just softened the card, so. Well, I'll bring you back when I've got it in place. Right, so I've managed to get the uh, fuselage skin on now. I've managed to get it to book right up to this wood. And uh, what I've done is I've squeezed a little bit of uh, wood glue into there as well to hold that joint and then uh, my daughter got me this some time ago for my desk and I keep all my elastic bands from posty and luckily they were just the job for this so I put one on in all the key places particularly near the door and whether you can see that because that skin comes right up to that and has to mount on that ring on both sides. So that's why I'm 
holding it particularly with the bands on that two bits this just for a centerpiece and this because obviously it's the end section but uh, this seems to have gone on really well I mean obviously uh, having dirty fingers I put a few green paint marks on it but hey that's not going to matter because I'm going to be painting it anyway but uh, the interesting thing is at least you can see it green all the way through now <laughs> which uh, that pleases me anyway it's just one of them things really I don't think a lot of people are probably bother but I'll show you the picture I've got a picture of it which is what made me do it yeah this is where I got the idea for the uh, inside of the glider uh, it's from the uh, Pegasus Bridge uh, Museum. They've got a horse there. And uh, I think on one of these pictures. Oh, there's, there it is. Outside the museum. But if I close right in. Can you see the green just inside the doorway? That, that's, that's where I got the idea for the green from. And then also... go back from that there's a picture that shows you inside it which is what made me go for the green obviously that's the one that's at uh, the Pegasus Bridge Museum so that's why I went for the colour. Right, I'll uh, I'm going to leave this to dry now, and uh, I'll clear my desk ready for the next bit, and I'll bring you back. I'm pretty sure that this looks a little bit weird, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the tail wing is staying exactly 90 degrees it tells you to use a bit of an off cut um, and I did that but just while it's uh, you know fixing while the glue's drying I wanted to make sure that it ran the whole length of the wing to make sure it was exactly straight so this bit of a Heath Robinson arrangement is what's keeping it while it while it sets so I'll let that go off and then I'll bring you back so I've also applied the skin to the tail piece now, which is very similar to the fuselage. Right, so that's the tail done. It uh, the the MDF went together really smoothly. This was a bit awkward, I must admit, Mo a lot more awkward than I thought the fuselage would be. Um, it seems a really tight stretch to get it round, no matter how much you shape it. It seems to be, you know, it's the actual struts that are holding it out, out in places. Um, but you just got to persevere with it, really. You probably need quite a bit of uh, glue down on these seams as well to hold it because of the stress that it's under. And then I, I'm using lots of bands on this to keep it in place. And I'm going to let this thoroughly dry now before I move on to the next stage. Um, but that's basically the end of the next page anyway um, we've got the struts on to support the back wing one thing I did have which was uh, I might have just been unlucky but I don't know whether you can see the uh, these parts They've obviously cut through to make it look realistic so the flaps can go up and down. Um, but my f this one, when I got it out of the wood, it just fell off, uh, which was a bit disappointing. So, because it's only, it's only held together on these two little lugs in the middle, because the rest of it is cut through. Um, 
like I say, I understand why they've done it because it, it's to make it look like all that can bend and fold. Um, but I was disappointed that it had actually fell off. Um, but I've actually managed to glue it in place. So that's not too big a problem. But uh, yeah, I've just got to thoroughly let it dry now. Like, there's a seam underneath. I can show you how tight it was. So what we've got now is we've got the uh, tail part. The centre. So we've got the main body of the plane now is 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 all there it's all complete so the next job is going to be working on the wings but as i say i'm going to let this thoroughly dry now before i go any further with it well them pegs on there still the door opens and shuts okay so that's 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 good. Alright, so we'll let that dry and uh, then we'll turn to the next sheet and get the wings out. Right, so that's the main wing assembly together. Um, the important bit was just uh, making sure that you'd got the upper and under wing in the right order because they do have the same fixing holes but it does warn you about that it does say note the under wings are two mil shorter um, but it's very easy to run away with yourself and think that you know what you're doing so it's best just to slow down a little bit and have another look at it just to be sure but I've uh, glued the two wings together what I've got to do now is I've got to put these skins on but I'm going to have to leave this now to uh, thoroughly dry before I do that and I've clamped it to make sure none of these struts that I've had to put on are lifting up out of position because they're what connect it um, to the lower wing as well right so I'll leave that to dry and then I'll bring you back. Right, so the wings are dried. So what I've done now is I've bent this uh, cardboard trim that connects the two window pieces like that. So it's got the wing profile. And then I've clamped it as much as I can in every place and banded it as well because you've got to make points of contact along the wing on the cardboard obviously on the the joint pieces that come through the card and then on the face you've got to connect that to the board itself and so I've, I've tried to hold that in place while it sets so as you can see it's coming together now got all the main parts of the plane ready it's uh, just one thing left right so I turn to the last section and I've built up the wheel chassis and I've let that set now so that's ready to affix to the glider I've also glued the wings in place now it had got two locating lugs, but they're very, very small. And, of course, when you're pushing down, it's very hard to see it as well. But uh, it seems to have held really well now, so not a problem. Uh, all I've got to do now is attach this. So I'm going to get that done. And then I'll bring you back. Right, so it's uh, finally finished. I've um, just put another extra layer of glue around this bit to fill the joint. And the same on the back wing as well. 
uh, just to make it easier for when the paint covers it up. So that's it complete. the underside you can see the wheel arrangement obviously I've showed you before I've adjusted the door so it opens and shuts okay it was a little bit stiff originally but I just filed that down a little bit and it's fine and obviously the windows are all in place obviously the uh, the ones under the wing I've not bothered putting glass in them because it's curved so it wouldn't have stayed on anyway but what I will do when it comes to the painting job I'll push something inside there to make sure it doesn't mess up the inside paintwork you know, by coming through the holes. It's quite a substantial piece, really. And the weight, the weights in that bit definitely needed look because it wants to do that. But with the weight in it, it does hold it upright. You know, so you really do need to put them in. Um, so that's that's the build done um, I'm not going to let this video run on any longer because obviously it's already going to be a long one um, so what I'm going to do is I'll do a part two on this at some point and uh, I'll show you how I paint it up but for now that's it finished so thanks for joining me hope you've enjoyed it and uh, if you have liked it, please consider giving me a thumbs up and uh, why not subscribe and then you'll get to see how this one ends up when it's painted. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.